Hey everyone, this week we're going to do some outdoor dog photography. So this is Otis, this is our Labradoodle. If you've watched any of my videos in the last six and a half months, you might have already seen Otis in some of my videos. But today I've come out to Cannon Hall, I was here not too long ago. I'll put a link up top to the video where I did some infrared here. And what we're going to do today is some dog photography. So he's quite an energetic dog, he likes to run around. This is the perfect area for him to really have fun. And I'm going to get some shots of that and run around, lots of action shots. And then when he's a little bit tired, I'm going to get some more intimate close-up shots, hopefully, if he'll stay still. And uh, use a nice close-up lens for that. So we'll see what we can get. So I've come out today about an hour before sunset. Hopefully that'll give me the best of the golden hour light. I won't get the nice bright light in the midday, which would mean that I could keep my shutter speeds nice and high and my ISO low. But it is a much better quality light in the evening and I'm prepared to put my ISO up a little bit and get the grain in the image rather than have the poor light. Gear wise, I'm bringing the D500 today. It would be nice to use my Z7, it's full frame, it's got all those megapixels and the high quality, but I really need the speed of the D500 today. It can do 10 frames a second, and I need to be tracking Otis as he's running about and making sure that I get plenty of shots with that high burst rate so that I can pick out the best ones from those bursts. Right now I'm using my 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 Nikon lens, and later on, when it gets a little bit darker, I'm going to switch to probably my 35mm 1.8 Nikon lens uh, to get some close-up portraits. I've also got a wide-angle Tekina 11-16mm to and I've got the Nikon 17-55mm to as well, so I've got some options. But right now, I'm still going to try and get some more action shots. We're throwing the ball. It's good knowing notice. It really helps when you know your pet and you know how they're going to act. That really helps to get the shots because you can judge how they're going to react when you throw the ball and things. We've got his favourite toy, I'm going to try and throw it in the air, get some shots as he catches it and hopefully those look good. So I'm having to work quite quickly this evening. It's getting to sunset time now, and also there's some cloud coming over and blocking out that sun. So it is getting quite dark. 
I'm going to switch to the 35mm now, 1.8 and Otis is a bit tired now so I'm going to stop doing the action shots hopefully it'll stay still long enough so that I can use some slower shutter speeds and I can get some nice portraits So as I said before, it's really useful to understand your dog. And I know that Otis loves treats. He'll pretty much do anything for treats. So I've got one here and I'm going to use this to get him to sit down. Come here, Otis. Otis, come here. Good boy. Come here. Come here, sit. Sit. That's a good boy. There you go. And then hopefully I can get a quick shot of him. Otis, sit. 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 Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Otis. Otis loves chewing sticks, so I think it's really good for a portrait shot to get him chewing that stick there, and it just adds a little bit of personality to the shot, and just shows his character a little bit. Hey, hello, hello, come on, hey, look at me, Otis. <laughs> So that was really good fun, really enjoyed that. Not quite as much as Otis I think, <laughs> he loves to be outside, Cannon Hall is such a great location, so much space and he loves just to run around and fetch the ball and things so we all had a fantastic evening. And as I said I was using the 70-200mm 2.8 lens to start off with, with the action shots and that worked really well, it allowed me to keep some distance while he was running around but it's also got that 2.8 aperture so I could get plenty of light into the lens and I didn't have to push my ISO too high. I was around 1600, sometimes ISO 2000. But that meant that I could get my shutter speed nice and high, even though it was fairly low light in the evening. And that would freeze Otis. I was usually around about 1 1500th of a second to about 1 1 2000th of a second. And that was enough to freeze him as he was jumping around for the ball and things. And I was using AFC mode for that, continuous autofocus, which means that as I'm tracking him, I can keep my finger on the focus button and it'll keep continually refocusing so that if he moves forward and back, he's going to stay in focus. Later on, when I switched to the 35mm 1.8 lens, I could switch to AFS mode for the single shots. And then I could spend a bit more time positioning my uh, focus point with the joystick to get that really nice portrait shot. And it was nice to get intimate as well and get close to him when he was a little bit more tired and he wasn't moving around as much, he would stay still. And you get just a bit more feeling in the image, I think, when you're close up, much like you would with a, a human subject. If you're getting close, it feels a bit more personal. So I really liked getting those shots at the end.
And that's about it for this video. So as always, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Really do appreciate it. If you are new to the channel and you want to subscribe, I would really encourage you to do so. You can always click over here on the picture of me or down below on the red button that says subscribe. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone. Bye for now.